And as much as I did not like using macOS for 30 days, I hate using Windows even more. It did happen that I received uh, internal internal criticism. And people still felt like, oh, KD copied Windows. No, we've been doing that for like five years. And honestly, the, the current Breeze team, it, it's not bad. Like, it's legible, it has good contrast, it's, it's very usable. It's just that I think... So I just wanted to say that uh, Plasma 6 is coming, uh, finally, and uh, qu a very important detail of Plasma 6 is that uh, we haven't decided to just do a Plasma 6 because we thought, okay, it's been enough time since Plasma 5, let's just do something new. But rather obviously, Qt released a new version of its toolkit, Qt 6, and since we rely a lot on Qt, we decided to create a new Plasma to go along with the new release of Qt. But at the same time, uh, given that we were kind of forced to make a new uh, major release of Plasma, we thought, okay, what do we want this new KD Plasma version to be? And uh, we kind of discussed this and decided uh, some things months and months ago. And just now, finally, we're getting some results and seeing uh, how that uh, things we decided are actually translating into real code. So I was really wondering, uh, since like your channels is much bigger than mine and people uh, when Plasma 6 are released are very likely to go to you to hear about the latest stuff. What do you expect uh, Plasma 6 to go? And what do you think KDE developer should have at this point uh, decided as their goal and targets for Plasma 6? Okay, so I, I'll try not to color my answer too much with what I know of Plasma 6, uh, I'm going to try to to talk from the point of view of, like, I don't know what's in there. And first, I think it's a great thing to have made, like, a major release, like, uh, separate from the usual cycle, like, not forcing you to, to yourselves to have a, a four-month release cycle for this one. Uh, I think 5.27 is a great, is at a great stage right now. It's really stable. It works well. It has decent Wayland implementations. Like, it, it's a good base for people to wait uh, until Plasma 6 happens. Now, for Plasma 6 itself, uh, for me personally, uh, I think what should be the focus, uh, or what should have been the focus since development already started uh, a lot, uh, is probably, like, just spending the time to refine things uh, further than what 5.27 has done. Because I think 5.27 and just the whole KDE 5 series was kind of constrained uh, in terms of what you could do because, well, it has a lot of baggage and people are expecting regular updates. With Plasma 6, since you're already porting to Qt6, you have the opportunity to rework a lot of stuff. And so what I would expect personally is uh, just a lot more polish, not necessarily more features, because I think KD has virtually everything anyone could ask for. Uh, maybe the only thing that you can't really do with it is like sort of a basic macOS dock, because uh, like you can kind of replicate that with a plasma panel, but it doesn't exactly work in the same way. That's about it. So not necessarily more features, but just more polish, like finalizing, completely finalizing the Wayland transition, uh, making the Plasma desktop and Plasmoids a little bit less finicky to place, to align, uh, maybe unify the visual style of a lot of Plasmoids, which can be very disjointed. Like if you try to place them on a column on your screen, none of them will have the exact same width, stuff like that. Uh, just generally a lot of polish and you can take the time to do that and you can basically bring KDE at a level that I don't think it has reached before, uh, not even at like the 3.5 series. Yep. Now, the second thing is not necessarily a Plasma thing. It's more of a, an application thing. Uh, like we've seen the Gnome app ecosystem completely explode in terms of number and quality. And and I wish KD had like the same kind of vibrant ecosystem. The, KD has a lot of cool applications, but you don't see the same number of smaller utilities uh, that look really easy to use, that look really like that really follow the guidelines of the desktop. And I think that could be an opportunity as well, but that's not necessarily linked to Plasma. Yep, and uh, in fact, uh, that is very similar to what we decided. Especially it was, uh, we discussed that in the past, we haven't had a history of major releases that were like super stable and people were super happy about. In fact, I know of developers 
who started contributing to KD Plasma because a major release was like pretty bad and they hopped in to help out. And uh, we wanted this to be completely different, having something that is very stable out of Dreadbox as soon as it's released. And we didn't quite look for new features. And even though we knew that, I mean, uh, Plasma 6 is one year from now, people are going to make new releases, uh, new features. Uh, that's just going to happen. And um, I, you mentioned the doc. Uh, I do agree with that. And currently, my plan there is already a complete redesign of the panel settings. We do have to change it further because of technical stuff. And I would like to add a button that allows you to make it a doc, uh, just a button, which wouldn't be an additional feature compared to what we have currently. It would just make it floating at the center uh, with the task manager and uh, not filling the whole screen. Yeah, sort of like something you could do manually, but doing it in one click instead of having to place everything yourself. Yeah, just making it easier and more streamlined. That's kind of the goal. And I do agree with the uh, GNOME application ecosystem being a target, like a, a goal for for what we have to do. And uh, it's what we were and are trying to do with the Kurigami. A lot of, lo lots of things are switching to Kurigami. And uh, very soon, a couple of days, we are going to have a new um, suite uh, in Kurigami for email, contact, and uh, calendar, and to-do, which is pretty cool, I think. Is it based on the calendar app? Yes. Basically, the calendar app grew so much that it decided to split into multiple uh, smaller apps. Yeah, that's cool. It's an awesome application. I, I think it's one of the fastest growing KDE applications. And you started the whole thing saying, uh, ignoring what I know of Plasma 6, right? What do you know of Plasma 6? <laughs> well, <laughs> let's see if I can remember everything I talked about in the past, like, 10 news videos. <laughs> uh, so yeah, obviously like uh, Wayland fixes, like making sure uh, the the like the applications don't crash when the compositor crashes. So that was a big one. Uh, they are switching to double click by default. Uh, there's a revamp in the settings page, I think. We're moving the like some buttons to the header of each settings page instead of having like a double row of buttons uh, below. Uh, there's a revamp of Dolphin settings, uh, search fields in, in various settings uh, of various apps. Uh, what else did I see? A complete uh, rewrite of the widget system, uh, as far as I understand it. Um, what else? Yeah, better integration with icon themes and sound themes uh, was also a thing. From the top of my head, those are the big ones that I can remember. That's already quite an impressive memory. And uh, <laughs> considering... <laughs> when you write those videos and you record them, you've basically read every news article five times. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <it's too sick. laughs> Well, to be fair, I did like, obviously a lot of video Plasma 6. I've also had a talk at KD Academy and yet I still have all of my notes there with all the changes I wanted to mention because I'm going to forget otherwise. But yeah, uh, the thing is, we're, we have two major um, different branches of development, one of which is uh, obviously we have a lot of uh, stuff that goes underneath that uh, the user won't see, obviously. But stuff that is uh, not noticeable to the user is uh, changes in the, in the default and new features and redesigns. As far as changes in the default, one good example is the double click by default, something I fully disagreed on, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of that one? What team are you? I think it's a good change because that's what most users are used to. Uh, but when I use KDE, I always use it with single click. Like, what, like currently I'm on GNOME. When I use GNOME, I use double click. But when I'm on KDE, I don't know why. I'm just used to single click on KDE and it works for me. But I think for most users, double click is more what they know. Yeah, we kind of had to switch to double click, especially because a lot of distros we're changing our default to make sure it was double click. So we're not even deciding the default anymore. These stores are doing it for us. So we kind of had to switch. My personal prediction is that, is that we are going to switch back as a single click as soon as the rest of the industry realizes that it's better. But another thing we wanted to do is to try to have a, um, some changes in design that are uh, default changes, so very easy to do. Um, but that could distinguish us visually from other desktops. And one example of that is using the floating panel by default. Did you see that? What do you think of it? I think it's... Because it, it was 
quite controversial. I think it's really good as well because, like, for most people who are going to discover KDE, it's gonna look better because let's be honest, it looks better. Like, you can't argue that a fixed panel stuck to the edge of the screen looks better than something that flows with rounded corners. You just can't, it looks better. And I'm not just saying that because you developed it, but <laughs> but it's 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 a great look. And people who don't like it, it's like a, a right click and one toggle to, to check. Like it's super easy to revert it if you don't like it. But I think for new users, it gives a more striking appearance. And honestly, when we're gonna see something like Windows 12, I would be very surprised if their taskbar wasn't the exact same way. Like instead of using the whole of the screen, it would be centered and floating. I'm pretty sure they'll do it. Yeah, though that kind of worries me because if we try to make the taskbar floating to visually distinguish from other operating systems and then Windows 12 is like floating <laughs> taskbar. But I mean, if we are first, we can kind of say, Hey, yeah. you copied us. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, like that that was also the argument like when Plasma 5 was released and the change in the Breeze theme and the Plasma theme, like it was new. It did not look like something like Windows 10. And then Windows 11 came and just basically looked exactly the same. <laughs> and people still yeah. felt like, oh, KDE copied Windows. No, we've been doing that for like five years. <laughs> yeah, always happens. There's a lot of like when uh, Windows used uh, our slogan, uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Were, yeah, <laughs> that, we saw that and it was like, oh, <laughs> Windows. <laughs> I've heard of that already. <laughs> do you think there are other simple changes that we could do to distinguish visually from other desktops? Well, they would probably be changes for the sake of being changes and not necessarily super usable. But yeah, for example, having a different window button layout, like splitting the buttons, like you would get the window controls maximize and minimize on one side and the close button on the other one, much like very old versions of macOS. For example, close on the right, but everything else on the left. Uh, you could have a very different theme. I was sort of expecting for Plasma 6 a different breeze theme. I know it has been revamped relatively recently in the, in the Plasma 5 cycle, but I would have liked to see a different one. Uh, I think the icons really hold up pretty well, uh, but I think the general theme for the apps feels a little bit flat a little bit dated in my opinion but that's very subjective so yeah but these would be changes for the sake of changes they wouldn't necessarily bring much usability in terms of how things work so i think honestly yeah. kd's strength is not necessarily looking so different than other things uh out of the box it's more that you can make it look very very different if you want to true that the, I will admit that there are some issues where uh, basically all KD developers or almost all KD developers use the default theme with the default settings. And because of that, most uh, third party themes do tend to break over time because we are just testing, we are not testing them. So, but that's definitely on, on us. Yeah. And, and, and you, uh, could, you couldn't know. test all of them. Like if you had to test every default theme and every quantum theme, like you would only be doing that. And it's, not exactly your job to do it, so. Yeah, <laughs> usually we have like uh, a couple of themes that are meant for testing purposes. Do, do you know of the Fluffy Bunny theme? Yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, that, that is the theme that we usually resort to when we have to test something. It's pretty funny in the video recaps that I do about it. <laughs> Re regarding the theme revamp, uh, that is actually something that uh, a lot of people uh, coming to Kitty asked for uh, very often people would join the visual design theme and the first thing they would say is let's do a big redesign let's do everything from scratch we can't quite do it yeah. <laughs> for a variety of, of reasons obviously mainly main power um, and uh, we often had to say like these are great ideas but we can just cannot do something like that. And uh, uh, I usually have had to say in videos, like uh, it's very good that you want to join visual design theme and contribute. The first thing that you do should not be to say, let's do everything from scratch. Like when you join a project, try to slowly- Yeah, uh, you, you pick a screen that looks super dated or is illegible and you try to revamp it. So it looks like more legible and, and, and better laid out, but you don't jump in saying, let's redesign the whole thing. Cause first you don't have any credibility yeah. in the team. So 
who knows where you're coming from, what your ideas are, what your experience in UX or UI is. And second, obviously people want to do that, but if they haven't started on it, then maybe it's not just because they lack the idea, it's probably because they lack the time to do it. Yeah, and uh, we do actually have a lot of things that are being redesigned uh, from scratch uh, within the Breath theme, which is a lot of different uh, small things. Um, when, well, obviously we improved it, you know, the breeze itself, the theme a lot over the last releases. We have, I think, half of an idea, which I don't know if we're going to follow up on that, but we kind of have half idea to change the name from breeze to something else uh, to actually say, okay, we did change a lot of things in the last releases and we want that change to have a name. Uh, but other things that are coming are a completely redesigned sound theme, as an, as an example. And obviously that required having an interface to change uh, sound themes, which we should soon have. And uh, I, I will admit that most people I talk about this sound theme with are like, uh, Plasma has sounds, I didn't know that. <laughs> Well, they are, yeah. When you plug in like a laptop, like you've got a, a sound notification. Uh, I think some notifications also have sounds, uh, pretty sure. The um, critical ones. I yeah, think. and I think when you boot up, may no, maybe not, maybe not at startup. Uh, I don't quite remember. I think not. But they, they are not I many, but honestly, you don't want your desktop to bombard you with sounds all the time. Like, yeah, for important things, cool, but... Yeah, don't send me a, a, a beep every time I receive one single notification because that's going to drive me nuts. Yeah. <laughs> which fonts does, like, do, which fonts do out, yeah. out of the box for some reason? I I'm really annoyed by that, actually. Oh, yeah, <laughs> super annoying. Especially when you're, like, in a group conversation and all of a sudden people wake up and start talking and your phone starts beeping like crazy every two seconds. It's horrible. Yeah. I couldn't get rid of the notification sound of my phone. Eventually, I just set 100 milliseconds of silence as my notification sound. <laughs> and that worked. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a good workaround. And uh, there's a lot of uh, things happening with colors as well. Because in 5.25, we introduced a lot of colorful features. Yeah. And, uh, and they look awesome. I, I, yeah, like like the, the window tinting and, and the accent colors in general, they look really good. I totally agree. So what I did for Plasma 6 is create a series of tasks that were like, can we please enable all of that by default? And uh, unluckily, <laughs> people were like, no, <laughs> for different reasons for each one. As an example, I really wanted um, accent color that changes depending on the wallpaper. So dynamic uh, accent color. And other developers rightfully were like, we can't change the colors of the elements every time the user changes the wallpaper that might distract or confuse them. And I can see that happening. And uh, secondly, I wanted window tinting. So tinting with the default um, blue color every window slightly, but that also didn't get, gain much traction. But we did uh, decide on tinting the header bars. So the idea is that by default blue, because that is the default accent color, all header bars should be slightly tinted blue. That is another um, redesign that we are working on and that isn't uh, complete yet. And uh, honestly, and, uh, the, the current Breeze theme, it, it's not bad. Like it's legible, it has good contrast, it's, it's very usable. It's just that I think the changes that happened in the, like, starting from, I think, 5.23 or 5.24 or something, uh, like, with the, with the different colors for hovering over elements in menus, stuff like that. All those changes were cool, but they were perceived as relatively minor in terms of visual changes. And so for people who've been using KD since the start of the KD5 series, the desktop hasn't really changed uh, much in terms of how it looks. And... That's not necessarily a problem, but I understand why people would want it to evolve like more drastically th than what's already been done. But but it's a yeah, good thing. Like it works. It works. It doesn't look old. It, like it's not like it's Windows ninety eight or something. Yeah. Uh, I thought I do have to agree that I say yeah, and I haven't used any other theme in years, so can't really compare. There's um, another, which is why really we are focused on uh, slight, slight improvements, like slowly making it better and better, even for Plasma 6. There's also uh, Cambernet who redesigned um, all the um, 
icons of uh, Dolphin, so all the folders, main types, and such. So now the new folders that ideally should be that have to be in Plasma 6, otherwise I'm going to be very annoyed at myself, <laughs> are much more rounded, uh, actually, and uh, friendly looking. So hopefully that is another thing that will slightly improve yeah. a breeze. And th that's a good approach. Like instead of having a complete rework of everything, just touching up a few details that you feel are suboptimal or have aged worse than the rest, it lets you iterate and see what works. And then like if people love the new folders i haven't seen them but the rounded folders uh, maybe you can like redesign a bunch of other icons in the same sort of rounded style and, and go from there and if people absolutely hate those icons and everybody thinks like it looks childish or cartoonish or i don't know then you can move that back and, and go back to another style so that's that's a good approach to design what we are uh, currently deciding now that we are closer to the release of plasma 6 is when actually to, to release plasma 6 because we don't have any kind of uh, date uh, as of right now um, do you think that we should go for like further in the um, further way but um, with more testing or should we because it's been quite a while since the last plasma release uh, are people I getting I would say higher? yes. I would say push it as much as you can. Well, not, not like three years, but <laughs> <laughs> but push it. If you need more time for testing, push it a little bit. Because if the goal is to provide a very stable, very solid first version of Plasma 6 and, and not repeat some mistakes uh, from earlier versions of, of Plasma, where the, the initial version of a new series were, was pretty buggy, then I think it's better to have more time for testing. Like people already know that it's not going to release like in, in October or November. So if it needs to be pushed to January, February, March next year, I would say do it because it's always better to have something that is really cool out of the box, really complete. You have all the features you wanted, all the new design touches, very good stability for most use cases. Then having something like, okay, you guys are getting impatient, so we're going to release it and now everybody has a bad first impression with it because like i don't know multi-monitors is broken for some reason and then every but everybody's gonna think oh kd is so buggy i'm never using that again even though it's fixed in the next release i, I would say yeah. push it if, if it needs more time yeah i do think that a lot of people will try out plasma 6 for plasma with plasma 6 for the first time in quite a while to decide if it has improved enough since the last time they tried it so I do look of it as uh, an occasion to show that Plasma has really improved in the last years. Yeah, and, it, and in a more logistical sense, uh, if you ship a half broken or at least one major use case kind of broken and, and you say, oh, we're going to fix it, then you have the chance of distros still shipping your older release instead of the new one, which means that now you have split your user base between Plasma 6 and, and Plasma 5, and I don't think that's great. So yeah, I would say give it as much time as you want. 5.27 is a very good platform for people who like KDE. And judging from the comments on my videos, like people are excited for Plasma 6, but they're not like impatient in the sense of, oh, if they don't release something in the next two months, I'm out, I'm moving to something else. So I don't think there's too, I don't know if, if that is the same as the experience that you might have as a, as a member of the KDE team and, and a developer, but me personally, when I talk about KDE, like people are excited about Plasma 6, but they're not saying like, we need it right now. Mm -hmm. No, that's good. Well, as a member of KDE team, most people I talk to are also members to, of the KDE team and they know how to uh, use the beta of Plasma 6. So, I mean, I, I live on Plasma 6 already, so I'm not particularly eager to have it released. I can use all the features anyway. And uh, another things, thing we have to decide on, and uh, I, I'm actually quite interested. I, I, I know I'm throwing a lot of de decisions we are making onto you because I'm really curious to see uh, outside. And um, uh, is the release schedule. So currently we do uh, three releases uh, every year. So one uh, every four months, which has some issues. Uh, as an example, it's very hard to align with distro release schedules, which are often a couple of times a year. And also for it means that the time between we are done with the release and we are uh, going to publish the release is very short. 
which is a problem for promotion. Like the promo team has requires a bit of time to know about everything that has been done and write an announcement to videos and uh, such. So we are considering switching to a slower uh, release schedule, which would also have its own issues. As an example, you make a um, change, I don't know, in January, if uh, due to stuff, it's the wrong time, you might have to wait even seven months to have it actually released to users. So there's a bit of uh, benefits and issues both, uh, both ways. What do you think of that? Well, I think the, the two releases per year uh, schedule is pretty good. Uh, sure, it means that you're going to have to delay uh, some features if they are not ready for inclusion. But I think it also means you don't have to follow. Like KD had some kind of tick talk release cycle like you had one with a lot of new features and then you had one with a lot less features but a lot of bug fixes uh, for the new features that were added and i think this can give the impression sometimes that kde is not very stable because if you start using kde on a you know, on a release that is bug fixes then you have a great time but if you start using it on a release that is majorly features you might have some problems so i think if you have more time for each release to polish it and make sure that all the bugs are well all the bugs you can never fix all the bugs but <laughs> most of the bugs and the most annoying ones are fixed then i think it gives a better impression the ideal way but i'm not sure that's doable would be to have like two releases per year in my opinion of course uh, two releases per year and having some way to deliver some new features in the middle of a of a cycle like for example if if you have your release in february but your feature has been started in january and will only be ready like two days after feature freeze or something maybe having a way to include it in a 0.1 release uh, during the cycle is good but at that point you're also cannibalizing the new features for the next version so yeah. it's not easy yeah. i, I think i think it's better to stick to being close to distro releases because ultimately unless you have like uh, unless you want to push KD neon heavily as the distro for KD then you kind of depend on them so so you have to have most recent distros ship your most recent desktop so i think it's the better approach it has drawbacks but i think it's best what what do you think of KD neon random question i love it uh, every time i need to try something on KD i run neon because like it's it's an ubuntu base i know this by heart like I, I know all the tools and honestly it's been super stable for me the user edition never had any problems with it you you speak better of kitty neon that most kitty developers have <laughs> talked about neon about you know maybe, maybe they use the testing or unstable versions more uh because me personally uh, uh, when i need to test the latest release of kd for one of my videos i obviously use like i think it's the testing or the unstable i never remember which one is is the right one but but i use one of these which obviously like you're testing pre-release software it's gonna have problems but like the user edition i would personally pick it over something like kubuntu for example okay that, that's good to hear obviously <laughs> it uh, sadly doesn't quite uh, uh, I, I cannot share that because i, I did have major issues with uh, kdnion sadly so we we would like to try something new with kdnion how it's done uh, maybe base it on something else this sort of th sort of things but nothing is ready to talk about it so i, I will stop with kdnion one thing that we can do uh, if we decide to switch to a couple of releases every year and that would be nobody has told me don't do this yet so i'm gonna say that until somebody does is we could ideally align our kitty plasma release exactly on the same day as the gnome release and have some card sort of desktop party this would make my life miserable so <laughs> so please don't <laughs> and, and i think it might be badly perceived like oh they're trying to overshadow the competition let's call it that um i think it's better if the dates aren't perfectly aligned honestly because yeah you're, you're basically dividing the attention of everyone uh, between two things that they might have been interested in uh, but yeah if, if you want to do that like sure why not but but it's gonna make my life very hard <laughs> <laughs> it's true that mine as well obviously <laughs> but, uh, I, I was like curious to try that out one time because it is true that it might divide attention attention between the two uh, 
But uh, what we tend to see in KD promo is that whenever you have more uh, announcements on the same day, they tend to have a much wide, wider audience. They reach a much uh, wider audience compared to splitting them over time. So I was kind of curious to see, maybe just trying out. But I think a, a, a good case for doing that would be maybe if you have some kind of major collaboration with GNOME. I don't know, like the KDE team and the GNOME team work together on some kind of standard, let's say for accent colors or whatever. And both releases ship with that support in it. Maybe that's a good thing. Like, okay, yeah, we work hand in hand. Uh, let's, and that would also put to rest the debate of KDE versus GNOME because People always fight online about that, but every time there's a new release of GNOME, the KDE team is like, hey, congrats, guys, it's awesome. And and the same way, like, I mean, yeah, maybe it's a cool idea, but please not every time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that will send a strong message. We, we tried to do that with the um, uh, April's Falls of uh, yeah. GNOME. That was pretty funny. We really organized with GNOME to make sure to have, like, we really wanted the message to be stop doing, like, desktop yeah. wars and like, such. You can, you can compare desktops to showcase what's different, but, like, what's the best? Well, newsflash, nothing is the best for everyone, so... That's why Windows is so bad, because yeah, it's I, trying to be good for everyone, and it only <laughs> succeeds to, at being mediocre for everyone, because you can't please everyone with one single interface. It's, it's impossible. Yeah, I've received a Windows computer just a couple of days ago to test it out. I boot up Windows 11. It's, it's terrible. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm currently working on a I used Windows for 30 days video, like, like I did like the Mac OS <laughs> video. And as much as I did not like using Mac OS for 30 days, I hate using Windows even more uh, in the end. It's just, it's, it's horribly designed. Are, I hate it. Are you using the very latest release? Of Windows 11? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so everything is blurry, which I like, and also, to me, quite laggy. It's very <laughs> laggy, and I've got ads everywhere in my start menu. Like, I even got some weird banners in the file manager saying, hey, use OneDrive and Office 365. Like, why are you showing me this in the file manager? Like, it's an ad for your services in your OS. Like, I paid for the OS when I bought the computer. You don't have to show me ads. You have my money already. Stop it. Yeah, really. And I, I got to say, I understand when people say that Plasma, when you start customizing things, feels a bit unstable or unpolished. Like, you, if it's everything is as is by default and you don't touch anything, then usually it feels quite stable. It shouldn't break. But if you start customizing that, yeah. But I, I gotta say, with Windows, I got the same unstable, finicky sensation when like popping up the overview they have, which comes from the bottom. And just yeah, don't it's like it's it. kind of stuttery. It's not smooth. Like some of their gestures with touchpads, they're not one-to-one -one gestures, which completely baffles me. Like you you do, it's like a keyboard shortcut. Like you do the gesture and then the stuff happens, but it doesn't move with your fingers. It, Come on, you have like, how many developers do you have, Microsoft? Like, can't you do that? It's weird. Like, <laughs> so many things are just badly integrated. Well, let, let's not digress about Windows, but yeah, it's, it's truly awful. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. And uh, well, you, you mentioned Jester. Let me mention one thing at the very end, just to say, because I'm quite proud of it. The one thing that I'm working on for Plasma 6 right now is the new overview. I don't know if you saw that. So. It is much, 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 much more similar to GNOME's, or GNOME's overview compared to what we had. And it has the overview itself and the grid view all in one effect. And you can just cycle between the three or you can just toggle one. I quite like it. It's everything is one-to-one -one gestures. You can switch one-to-one -one desktops whilst in the overview. I think it's... I'm really yeah, proud that, of that was <laughs> the last remaining issue I had with KD on laptops. It was like you you did I think it was a four finger gesture up for the overview or something and you had to do four fingers up again to get out of it which in terms of positioning of elements feels weird because you brought it up so to exit you should bring it down not rebring it up and if you had configured a, a yeah four fingers down to open, for example, virtual desktops, then trying to exit the overview would automatically move you to the, the virtual desktops without any transition. And it felt weird. So I'm, I'm super happy that this is something that is being worked on. It's awesome. Yeah, it's true that you point that out. Gestures are 
I think I'm really happy that we have them now and I think they're really good but uh, how they have been implemented I think they're a bit of a failure story of Kerry because they were half of implemented by one contributor that just did half of the stuff and left it there we did include it into the release when it was clearly half baked I, I didn't really like it or use it and then for plasma 5.25 finally somebody came to finish off the stuff and we finally actually you know talked about the fact that we had one-to-one -one gestures for real and uh, but still there were remaining issues such as this one which is obvious like why would you have to do three fingers up again yeah it's, it's a w? small thing but it's, it's a bit of a disconnect and i know like I'm, I'm super peculiar about this like people on my youtube comments always tell me like who cares about one-to-one -one gestures like linux mint has gestures you you do the gesture it does the thing yeah but it does not feel good to use like if you do this yeah. lift your finger and then it happens nothing has moved with your finger it's actually jarring and not helpful in terms of user experience, it's not a smooth user experience. One-to-one -one gestures, if you're doing gestures, don't do yeah. them if they're not one-to-one. -one. It, it, like, just use keyboard shortcuts, it's the same thing. Yeah, I totally agree. I do have to point out, because I try to be honest as much as possible, the bug that you're referring to, the four, four fingers down to exit overview has been fixed by Alish, not me, before I started working on the, actually the day I started okay. working on the new overview. So. Nice. Credit where it's due. I did not fix that. <laughs> uh, that said, <laughs> you know, when I present KDE and at the same time, I, I'm a KDE developer. Sometimes I worry that it might seem like I'm doing some stuff that I'm not doing. Yeah, you yeah. You, you sort of feel like you're taking credit for other people's work, but that's... Yeah, it never yeah. came off uh, as that for me personally when I, when I watch your videos. Like, I never feel like you're presenting things like, hey, look what I did. It's like, it's more like, look what we did. So I, I think... I don't think people think you're like yeah, it, taking uh, everything for yourself. It did happen that I received uh, internal internal criticism between KDE de developers for some stuff that I did handle incorrectly. So fault on me. So I, I really try to be careful on that. That said, that was actually kind of everything I wanted to say. But if you have any questions about the development of Plasma 6 that I can answer, if you have any curiosity. Uh, well, I won't ask when does it come out because obviously we talked about this. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, no, no. <laughs> uh, I don't have any questions specifically. I'm just glad to have like those weekly blog posts uh, that, that, that are published to, to see what, what is being worked on, how it advances, and, and even some technical details, which are really cool to learn about, uh, like how icon themes uh, have been changed slightly in Plasma 6. Like, I, I really enjoy reading about this. And yeah, it will be ready when it's ready. And as soon as it's out, I'll start using it like as a daily driver because I want to see how well it works. And I've been wanting to move back to KDE for a while now because I, I like switching, but I'm like, I'm not going to switch to 5.27 if six comes out in like four months because yeah, well, I might as well wait and have like a real big impression of KDE at the same time uh, when Plasma 6 is out. That is the pressure to KD developers to make a product that works perfectly. <laughs> and yeah, nothing is perfect. Like I, I don't think I've ever used a Linux desktop that is perfect out of the box and has zero bugs. Like not even a proprietary desktop. Like my experience on macOS has been riddled with issues. There are bugs everywhere. Stuff that doesn't react. Stuff that doesn't show on hover. Tons of problems. And Windows, same thing. Like the taskbar is a finicky beast. It, it bugs out a lot on multi-monitor setups, which you'd think they have this down by now, but apparently not. So it's not a problem if you have bugs. Like the problem is if you have major bugs that affect 70% of the user base, I guess. <laughs> nice. So that was everything for me. And thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was interesting for you as well.